Welcome everyone and thanks for joining in our last event of the week of awareness focusing on microplastic. Today's program is quite full and exciting as you will be learning how to reduce the waste for your daily life. Before going into details, I would like to have a quick overview of the different events of this special week. On Sunday, we had a very well detailed talk given by Michelle that taught us what are microplastics. Very briefly, microplastics are products coming from the degradation of plastic made items or from the material that is used to make plastic, which is the nurdles. Microplastics are ingested by the wildlife and oftentimes leading to their death. Moreover, due to their physical properties and chemical properties, microplastic can absorb pollutants, which will be released later in the animal system or by association into our system when we are feeding on animals. The accumulation of plastic in water and other places around the world is due to a constant production of plastic items with a lack of proper recycling. And this issue related to recycling was addressed on Monday through the episode of the necklace series Broken, focusing on recycling. We saw how little of the plastic waste is actually recycled by companies. It was very interesting to see that most of the recycling facilities around the world are actually only sorting out the trash for shipping in it to China or Malaysia. And then for these two countries to handle the waste of the entire world. And plastic production and recycling is producing toxic fumes as well as deteriorating air quality. Uh, the take home message of this movie is that as, even, as in, even as if um, individuals, uh, we can um, have the power of changing the way we are consuming and some of the consumption trends, the real action that has to be made is to close the tap of plastic production. And this change has to come from the decision makers as they are the only one being able to enforce law applicable in the countries or in certain companies or businesses. Then on Tuesday, we had the pleasure to listen to Susan Rosbach, a PhD student in the Red Sea Research Center and the result of her research that, was collaborate, that she was collaborating on about the interaction between microplastics and giant clams. She showed us that microplastics are filtered and retained by lots of shell animals, such as mussel or the giant clams, and that most of the, um, the part that is of the anatomy that is retaining most of the microplastic was not their digestive tract, but their shell. Her experiments show that under lab condition, a living shell was able to retain up to 66% of the provided microplastic in comparison to 44% for a dead shell. And this was very interesting result because um, it shows that coral reef can act as microplastic filters. This presentation was then followed by a very interesting discussion led by our guest, the distinguished professor Nikos Agis Christidis, that replied to all our questions and concerns about plastic formation, pollution, and recycling. Which led to the talk of yesterday, given by Luba, about how little we are able to actually recycle our plastic. She shared with us the different strategies adopted by the country's recycling champions and their alternatives to put into place um, strategies to avoid to get rid of the trash by only burning them. However, we saw that still a lot of efforts needed to be made. At the individual scale, our main conclusion through this whole week is that we need to reduce our plastic consumption and that we can extrapolate it to our consumption in general. We also have to keep in mind that the impact of the first, we also have to keep in mind the impact of the purchase that one is about to make on other people's life. Like for instance, if you are buying a single use plastic, then it means that later on first you will destroy the environment, but as well you will need people to sort out this plastic from other plastic that are recyclable. So you are creating more problems in the world, if we can say like this. So as a start, uh, one of our main things that we need to change in everyone's life is to stop consuming single use plastic. And if you don't really know how to do it, or if it feels a little bit overwhelming, this is the last part of this week that is made for you. So we will, ha we will first have an introduction by Nikos, followed by some tips and advice on how to reduce your rubbish at home through a video made by Jess and Grace, two of our community members. And if we have the time, we will screen the story of stuff also available on YouTube. So I will introduce quickly um, Nikos, who is our first speaker. 
So Nikos was born in Finland, but um, was growing up in Kos in Greece. He fell in love with the Mediterranean Sea and decided to pursue a career studying the world ocean. Holding a bachelor degrees in marine science and a master degree in aquatic ecology, he first joined CAOS in, in February 2019 as a visiting student with Professor Ibrahim Oteit. Since, he came back to CAOS to continue working with him as a PhD student, and his research, research sorry, focuses on studying phytoplankton in NEOM using satellite data. Using, during his free time, Nikos researched other topics that can benefit from him and other people. Uh, by far the most impactful change he has made to his lifestyle was adopting a whole food plant-based diet almost three years ago. Today he will introduce what problems are linked with overconsumption and why it is important to reduce your daily waste. So Nikos, it's up to you. Thank you for the introduction. So why and how should we reduce our plastic waste? Um, so as demonstrated in this picture, um, we can see that waste in general is taking over our planet and our oceans. So I'll go a bit more in depth. Plastic specifically are persistent pollutants. They are persistent because they are resistant to natural biodegradation and can last for hundreds of years in the environment. And they are pollutants because they are highly toxic and find their way in the food chain, causing death, disease, and birth defects among humans and animals uh, because of dioxins and PCBs. Uh, like we've already said this week, uh, we talked about microplastics uh, on Sunday and Tuesday, so I won't go more in depth into that. And for example, um, I, I recently found out that farmed salmon is the world's most toxic food by far because of this. So also like it was mentioned this week, recycling is not uh, the solution. There are seven types of plastic and only two of them are widely recycled. And in general, we've only recycled 9% of all the plastics that have ever been produced. Landfills are not the solution either, uh, as we also saw this week and had a discussion about it. Uh, many materials that end up as waste contain toxic substances that leach into our soil and groundwater and become environmental hazards for years. Also, there's the leachate. It is water or like a liquid that is formed when waste breaks down. And that is highly toxic and can also pollute land and groundwater and our waterways. Also, it uh, takes huge amounts of land and we can't keep sweeping stuff under the rug forever. Landfill sites are also pretty ugly and they will remain a problem for future generations because of how slowly the waste breaks down. So incineration, for energy is a solution, but it is not sustainable. Sweden, for example, incinerates all their waste that can't be recycled in order to produce energy and heat for their houses. But this is only effective if you use the waste instead of using fossil fuels. Studies have found like the, uh, the emissions vary uh, from anywhere between 600 to 4,600 grams per kilogram of plastics that is uh, incinerated. So why our community should drive the change? Um, because pointing fingers is not going to change anything. And like we saw on the documentary Broken, um, Southeast Asia is not a problem. They are just the dumpster uh, of the Western world. Uh, Study has shown that the level of income of each household group determines the volume of waste generated by such, a, by such a group. Thus, the higher the level of income for the group, the more waste it generates. And as we know, cost is a, has a high income overall. So 
we should be the leaders of the change. And also, it is very important to learn how to preserve our environment with a holistic approach and not only focus on one thing, like only focusing on fossil fuels or plastics or whatever by itself is not going to solve the problem. We need to see the problem uh, as a, a whole thing. So what is wrong with our society? Here I will just highlight what, in my opinion, and I'm not an expert, but this is what I believe is wrong with our society. And that is increasing the plastic waste. So first of all, we have FOMO, the fear of missing out and instant gratification. So these two uh, drive, increase the consumerism and that leads us buying stuff that we don't really need in our lives. And of course, this has a major impact on the amount of plastic waste produced. Another problem is that we buy a lot of stuff just because it is cheap and we can do so. And we are always looking for the cheapest options on souk, for example. Uh, we discard things rather than fix them. So not that long ago, when you bought electric appliances, for example, the manual had instructions on how to fix uh, if something went wrong but now the manual is full of uh, what not to do because you will uh, risk the warranty and so nobody is trying to fix this. Also, another problem is that everything is driven by profits and we do what we are told without ever questioning it. So what should we do instead? We should think twice about whether you really need to buy something. Less is always better as far as the environment is concerned. And like the image nicely demonstrates, mass consumerism is a form of disease and should be treated by everyone. Another problem um, is the endless scrolling of social media and that has had many impacts uh, on the amount of waste produced and especially plastic waste. They are compelling us to buy more and more because seeing others spend money on things subtly prompts us to do the same. Also, we become victims of more and better targeted advertising and sponsored influencers only make things worse, like promoting different products that you normally wouldn't consider buying. And also there is the convenience of shopping just from your smartphone nowadays. So it's way easier to buy something you don't really need. And of course, uh, everyone at some point has chased likes and Sometimes it happens with some new purchases that might generate more waste. We should also consider quality over quantity. And we should forget that I can buy three of these for the same price that I can buy the good quality products. Because we should consider every purchase as an investment. We should check if the item that we wish to buy, if it can be recycled as well. And if it cannot, we should look for alternative environment friendly options that can be recycled, that serve for the same purpose. For example, I've had these pairs of pair sunglasses in the summer of 2015, and I still have them today. So that's just an example. Usually I try to buy things that last long. Um, also, we should all simplify our lifestyles and we shouldn't be dependent on too many things. But people uh, have, have been happy in the past with uh, way less, way fewer comforts than we have nowadays. 
for example, I haven't used shampoo for over two years and yet my hair is still okay. It's doing okay. Uh, also, uh, buying material things won't make you happy in the end. And that has been uh, written by many individuals who have tried a minimalistic life. We should appreciate and make the most out of what we already have. Uh, we should share more. Not everyone needs to own every single thing. So you can share with your friends, your, uh, your parents, maybe even your neighbors. Also, less possessions means less maintenance. And that as well saves a lot of uh, waste sometimes. Another interesting concept that I came across recently and was written by uh, a friend of mine, actually, uh, is degrowth. And in this article, they mentioned how degrowth is the only responsible way forward. And to quote just uh, two paragraphs from their article, to sustain the natural basis of our life, we must slow down. We have to reduce the amount of extraction, pollution, and waste throughout our economy. This implies less production, less consumption, and probably also less work. Both degrowth and socialism center around the idea of sharing. Based on the same fundamental values, we could have much more interesting debates about what is truly important. We don't need growth to reach a good life for all. What we do need is a genuinely democratic and radical transformation of our economy. And uh, also, uh, I would have added some tips for uh, groceries, but this is really well demonstrated on the video that will follow next. So thank you for your attention. I hope you learned something new. Thanks a lot for this really cool um, presentation in general. I really liked it and I think it was very informative. So we have time if some of the people would like to ask questions maybe before we are checking how to reduce our rubbish. There's just a few clarifications in the chat about uh, emissions uh, from the incinerator. For example, uh, uh, Ishan was asking. So I, I as well, I didn't understand what uh, uh, emissions you mentioned particularly like uh, if you take a uh, uh, say the in mind uh, all emissions uh, like not in the end step but uh, you know the production of uh, plastics etc and then burning then if you meant the greenhouse emissions or was it something else because if greenhouse emissions then of course it's uh, like it cannot be less than burning fossils uh, directly because it's already implies uh, burning and like the plastics and then burning uh, yeah i think they only counted the greenhouse emissions um Last when step. compared when they compared the burning only and not the production of the plastics mm. okay uh, there is another question actually so i will uh, just ask it now from Ishan that say that degrowth makes sense for a handful of developed countries, while it may look like a bad thing for all the other countries. What do you think? Um, it's a good question. Um, but like I said, the developed countries are the ones uh, who produce the most waste anyway. So we should be the ones to, to drive the change land. I don't mean that we should like, push degrowth to nations that are struggling, but obviously the ones that are developed. So yeah, it's a good question and it's up for debate. I can share actually the article so anyone interested can read it. Yeah, that would be great if you can share it uh, maybe on the chat for now and, uh, and then people can read and we can maybe later on open more discussion that would be great we will uh, we recorded all our talks so everything will be available on youtube starting from next week and we will also probably share like all this new uh, way of thinking that uh, everybody put together or cast um probably in the lens as well so just try to be updated and share it with all the people that you think we could be interested because in the end it's really just like 
from one person to the other that we can probably impact a little bit more all these changes. We also have like our um, tutorial to make um, your own uh, reusable bag. And this weekend will come another tutorials on what to do instead of um, recycling your things, but to reuse them. So also just check our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. Thank you.